All right, as it looks like people are coming around to understanding what we're dealing with here is a psychological operation. We're going to go over some news here on the network, and we're going to start with this one because somebody besides myself has finally called it out for what it is. Let's look at his reasons. Of course, I've got my own, which is why I, I pinned it as a PSYOP several days ago. But let's see what this uh, Dabu7 has to say. This is Dabu7. And I want to point out the fact that this whole situation here in Ferguson has been nothing more than a huge PSYOP. And what it's done is it's achieved a couple different things. For those that have been sitting back paying attention and watching, first thing you notice is that they stated that this was a white cop that had shot a young black teen. Now they've released who the cop is, Darren Wilson. The story's changed, and did you notice? They never once stated this whole time that there was an armed robbery until now. And there's a couple reasons for that. The first being, if they would have stated this out the gate, they would have never got the chaos that they so wanted. They were able to bring in their military equipment. They were able to chase out news crews. They were able to do all of these things that they set up tactically, all in the psychological warfare that they're waging on the minds of the people. Now, it did not help that the people behaved like animals in the streets and gave them what they wanted. But in a sense, they initially were hoping for Trayvon Martin round two, where it was going to be black on white, because that was the initial reports a white cop gunned down an unarmed black teen. And that's how it was pushed on the masses to fuel the people. Never a mention of an armed robbery. Right? So they come, they wait they're, they're, they're playing this whole thing out, timing it out, seeing how they could play their cards. If the people were still enraged enough and provoked when they dropped the name in the face of this individual, this cop that shot him, it would have provoked more rage. But it hasn't because what they've done is they've installed this. That now there was a robbery, an arm... Uh, a strong-armed, strong-armed robbery where he stole a box of Swisher Sweets. And we have no proof of what really happened from this video clip. I'll tell you that he does shove him. There, I'll leave links. It's every single place right now is jammed. The video is just like not playing anywhere. There's, a, there's one piece here in the BBC. You can see him shove him off of him right there. But we don't know what took place exactly right there. So at this point, I just want to state that, hey, this whole thing has worked into the advantage in the favor of who? You guessed it. They provoked the people. They got to test out some new things, see how the people would respond. And they got all the information that they were looking for. And they silenced this right on cue. And this was the trick. This was the trick. You see, at first, it was, would they take the bait for, for Trayvon Martin type deal? We didn't. Then it was just the people all together against the police. That's what they didn't really want to have. Okay? So at that point, they were able to simmer the whole thing down, coming in with smiling faces and saying they're, they're going to release the name, but making sure that when they release the name, they drop the biggest bombshell of it all. That, oops, we forgot to tell everybody, this guy was involved in an armed robbery. You see, and if the riots would have got way out of hand and they're just now dropping this, one of the guys in the, the guys in the streets that got a brick in their hand ready to smash the windows, like, what? They're saying he robbed him. What? They're dropping it to go find out what really happened now. Starting to feel like fools. But then many other people were like, no, this is a setup. It's a setup. There's no way. There's no doubt in my mind from looking at the footage here if this is exactly how it went down from what I'm seeing. It looks like there was some kind of altercation in the store. Is there any proof that this guy stole anything? None. Is there proof that he had an altercation with the guy that you see here? Yes, but that's enough to feed the sheep. 
And this guy walks out of the store, gets gunned down. You can see right here in the timeline. And what's it done? It's incited anger across the whole country. People marching in New York, all over the place because of this. Now what are they doing? I bet you there ain't going to be no big protest tonight. Because at the weekend, when more people are out, if they wanted to have fueled it that way, they very well could have. But they wanted the people on the people. That's the best way to control it. It's to their advantage. And it's not working anymore. Because we've awakened. The PSYOPs are not working anymore. And when I see them, I'm going to call them for what they are and expose it. You just witnessed a huge operation. And for those that fed into it, I hope you learn a valuable lesson. Next time, I expect to see some leaders rising up and capitalizing on this energy and directing it in the right direction and conducting themselves in the proper manner to get the right things done. The power is in the people. In politics, we address the power is in your numbers. This is Dabu Sefan. Eyes open. All right, well, that kind of brings up the issue of what are they going to do with this hands up, don't shoot PSYOP if the people stop protesting because that was very, very scripted. The first National Guard troops arrive at Texas-Mexico border about time. Yeah, we'll watch it. And if you uh, if you don't know, if you want to run through the news with no BS and not having to search uh, an hour, Truth Broadcast Network is where you want to go. In fact, let me show some upgrades that we just did. And by we, I mean... I, but we have great people on the network. Of course, you got your breaking news. Click on there. You're going to get the latest breaking news from Good Truth Sources. And here we just had a new one come in six minutes ago. Well, this shows the whole robbery, raw footage. So let's check it out. This is Dabu7 wanting to share with you here just the raw footage. There's no audio of what takes place here in this robbery. Okay, here we have his friend up here distracting the clerk. All footage. There's no audio of what takes place here in this robbery. And I hate to say this, but looks to me like somebody over here is stuffing something in his pants. I'll attach it to the other video I just put out as well. And I'll leave a link in the description box. This has been Dabu 7. Okay. This guy here, this guy here is Michael Brown. Let's start it over from the beginning. Did he steal anything? I don't know. Let's this see. is Dabu 7 wanting to share with you here just the raw footage. There's no audio of what takes place here in this robbery. I'll attach it to the other video I just put out as well. And I'll leave a link in the description box. This has been Dabu 7. Eyes open. All right, let's back that up just a little bit. Watch it again. So, store clerk thinks he's stealing something. Tries to block the exit. Michael Brown shoves store clerk in order to get out of exit.
obviously behaving in a threatening manner. But all we saw there was the initial shove of the store clerk so that he could get out of the exit. Now here's the thing. If he was stealing something, well, that's really messed up because he stole something and then he shoved a clerk to get out of the store. But if he did not steal anything, if he was not stealing anything, well, I don't know about you, but nothing pisses me off more than somebody accusing me of something that I did not do. That infuriates me. Problem is, he's got a long rap sheet. So let's just finish the video. Well... It is what it is. He's got a long rap sheet. He probably did steal something. He did shove the clerk. But guess what? In America, we're supposed to have trial by jury, not summary execution. So whether he stole something or not, he should not have been gunned down on the street. Unless he viciously attacked a police officer and the police officer thought he was going to die. Somehow, I doubt that. Furthermore, the police officer most likely had a taser, and we were told tasers were going to be used where guns might otherwise have been used. So why wasn't he tased? Well, it is about time. How long has it been here? I think this country could have done been invaded and took over by the time it took for these guys to get National Guard troops down at our southern border. But hooray. I just don't want to hear about the border. It's been such a debacle with alleged militia going down there, making fools of themselves. Don't tell me he's fear-mongering on Ebola now. update here to the Ebola situation worldwide as the World Health Organization is now stating that this Ebola crisis is being vastly underestimated. Now, like anything that comes through the news, the people will latch on to it, they'll focus on to what's going on, and then here in another week or two, they totally forget about it. It's on to the next thing. They've already hit the people with the first dose of Ebola and everything's starting to simmer down now. The fact of the matter is, is that the crisis itself has not simmered down. It's still unchecked and out of control and nothing's changed in that aspect. Now, I was hoping to report on the new numbers here of people that have died, but they have not updated this since Monday. 1,069 is where it sits, and I can assure you at the, at the rate that they were dying the last two days that they were counting, uh, that we'll probably have definitely passed 1,100 at this point or coming right up on it. All right, we need a bigger variety in news here, don't we? Secret Service investigating photo of ISIS flag outside the White House. Almost everything is a PSYOP now. Michael Brown and Trayvon Martin, both mainstream media distractions from AMTV. That'll be Christopher Green. I'm going to let it run until he gets too loud or tries to sell me something. And as... And that's how far that made it. I thought I already cut him off the network, but somehow the network is still running his video, so whatever. Kiev claims it attacked partly destroyed Russian armored convoy passing into Ukraine. 
See, this is hearsay. Everything we see is hearsay. Ferguson Police Chief says Officer Darren Wilson shot Michael Brown. From 11.48 to noon, the officer involved in the shooting was on a sick call on Glen Arc. There was an ambulance present. At 11.51, there was a 911 call from a convenience store nearby, not this one. Um, at 11.52, dispatch gave a description of a robbery suspect over the radio. A different officer arrived at the store where the strong arm robbery occurred. A further description, more detailed, was given over the radio and uh, stated the officer was walking toward, or the uh, suspect was walking toward Quick Trip. At 12.01 p.m., uh, our officer encountered Michael Brown on Canfield Drive. At 12.04, a second officer arrived on the scene immediately following the shooting. And at 12.05, a supervisor was dispatched to the scene and subsequent officers arrived. The officer that was involved in the shooting of uh, Michael Brown was Darren Wilson. He's been a police officer for six years, has had no, uh, no disciplinary action taken against him. He was treated for injuries which occurred on Saturday. All right, guys. I wanted you guys to see that they have named the police officer, Darren Wilson, that was involved in this shooting. No disciplinary action, and he was treated for injuries stemming from what they're now saying was a strong-armed armed robbery, and they're naming him as the suspect. Now, this is takes a huge twist here because none of this was mentioned um, out the gate as everyone was sitting here saying we have an innocent man, innocent man. There was no mention of none of this. I want to point something out. This is how the news of Ferguson spread ac across Twitter, and it just absolutely erupted. You'll see right here on the timeline as it plays. You'll notice that right at the time, about a little more than three-quarters of the way, Right when the time that the two journalists got arrested, it just absolutely erupts. But I'll leave links for all this stuff. As always, keep you guys posted as I get more. Until next time, it's been Dabu7. Peace. Well, that's pretty badass, that Twitter thing. I've never seen that before. I don't know what website you go to for that. Oh, I guess we could look at Russell Brand for a minute. Hello, welcome to The Truths, The True News. If you want to subscribe to it, you can click there, right? Is that where you click all? Or there? There. Okay, uh, these are the comments that we've received on our edition on Ferguson, the disturbances in uh, America, in St. Louis. This first one's from Tom Stewart. Let's not forget that Mark Duggan was illegally carrying a firearm. I mentioned Mark Duggan and the riots in England a couple of years ago. Let's not be too hasty to draw parallels. As much as I welcome change, it's, na it's, it's naive to think that revolution can bring real change. I just think there are so there were some parallels, man. I'm not saying it's an absolute carbon copy facsimile of the situation, because that sort of thing don't happen often in reality. I'm just saying. It was a black person getting killed by the police in a primarily black area that led to social disturbances. I mean, it's quite a lot of parallels. Come on, Tom Stewart. I mean, it's, you know, what I think is important, Tom, is that there's, that these incidents provide a flashpoint because there seems to be, it seems to be a kind of, what do I want to say, a catharsis for an underlying feeling or if not, you know, a, a detonation of an underlying feeling. That's the thing that, that where I do think there's a corollary or a parallel. I'd like Russell to consider, reconsider his position on voting. It's so important for young people to engage with politics and vote. For me, that's a contradiction. By, by voting, you are complying, you are complying to a pre-existing system. I think we need real significant change, and that real change won't come if enough people are compliant. So while you see voting as expressing yourself, I see it as compliance with a system. I don't think that voting has to be like that. I don't think that all voting is bad, as I've said many times. I just think it's pointless unless there's something... Okay, that's enough 
what's his name, Russell Brand. White Rain Dunsk re- residents record al- alleged phosphorus shelling. Using phosphorus is a war crime. Citizens of Donetsk have recorded multiple videos of white glowing particles raining on residential quarters. The video cannot be verified, but locals claim it shows incendiary devices being used. We'll check it out. Because if they're using phosphorus, that's a war crime. And now, as we mentioned earlier, it's suspected that incendiary bombs were used over Donetsk. To discuss that, let's now talk to a former U.K. Army officer and Scotland Yard detective and anti-terrorism specialist Charles Shubridge, who was the first person to investigate Israel's use of white phosphorus in the 2008-2009 Gaza campaign. Thank you so much, Mr. Shubridge, for uh, joining us here in IT International. Well, uh, let's take another look at uh, the video of the, the suspected attack. I know you've seen it. Um, Did it look like incendiaries to you? Well, if this video is genuine and it should be said that so far there's nothing to suggest that it isn't, then indeed it does show many of the characteristics one would associate uh, with the use of white phosphorus or very similar um, incendiary. In particular, you've got uh, bursts of large numbers of small particles of very brightly Uh, burning uh, material. Uh, In other words, this has been delivered by um, artillery or mortar, rockets or perhaps aircraft delivered, but it's bursting relatively high in the sky. And then, uh, characteristically, it's falling very quickly to earth. Um, This is a feature of white phosphorus and similar materials because uh, a a normal illuminant, uh, such as flares, and we saw a lot of those, for example, being used in the Gaza attacks recently, and indeed we've seen them being... Yeah, that's a war crime. And that's all we have for the most re- recent breaking news. Of course, we have other tabs here. And a lot of it really goes overlooked. Under Insights, we've got Josie Outlaw, Julie Borowski, the political port, which I think is crucial. She's really, she nails things right off the bat. Storm clouds gathering, Patriot Nurse, eh. We're going to need medics when it comes down to it. Let's see if Josie Outlaws put anything out lately. Doesn't look like it two weeks ago. The political port put out something really good. And there it is. Hello, thank you for watching the political port. I have done several videos about Common Core and the pedophile agenda within Common Core and um, sadly it's fallen on some deaf ears um, when it comes to parents. Uh, They put their blinders on, they put their earmuffs on and they don't want to see or hear anything about it. But luckily some parents in Fremont, also known as Freakmont, in Fremont, California, have decided to stand up as parents should and put their foot down when it comes to sex education um, in their children's school. Ninth grade textbook features sex toys, oral sex, and bondage. Wow, a lot different from the classes that I had in ninth grade, which kind of told you about your body, such as, you know, uh, women have periods and, you know, boys get erections, things like that. Not, hey, tie your girlfriend up and whip the shit out of her. Or, you know, hey, girl, get a little um, battery-operated friend and have sex with an inanimate object. The fuck is this shit? Seriously, what the fuck is this shit? This shit does not belong in schools in any way, shape, or form. I am not, nor will I ever be, a fan of um, sexuality being taught in school, whether it's homosexuality, uh, heterosexuality. I mean, I just, it just doesn't belong there. We can't, you know, we've got kids who can't even fucking read. They can't even read. 
but we just have to teach them about bondage, don't we? We just have to teach them about, um, you know, anal sex. Like, what? what? What are you even talking about? Like, it, like are, you, are you kidding me? But anyways, this parent found out about, um, you know, what was in the textbook and said, oh, hell no. And then um, a bunch of parents decided to uh, have a petition. I think it was over 2,000 parents had a petition. And now they're, you know, going after the school district. Like, why are you allowing this shit? And the Fremont Unified School District board president, Laura Calvert-York. Oh, yes, another hyphenated name. You know how I love those. She said... We really want them to have a safe place to get facts about their bodies and how to handle things and how they need to be mature to deal with these things. You're expecting a child to be mature. Huh. Hmm. <laughs> we want them to have a safe place. So with that safe place, are they taught to have a safe word since you're teaching them all about bondage, you stupid cunt? Wow. And then this other woman, Michelle Hart Man Grubber, and she looks like a man grubber when you see her picture. I'll put the link below for you. Um, she works in Irvington High School, and she said, I want to let everyone know, if you think sex isn't happening with your freshmen, you need to take your blinders off. It's happening. It's happening in the corners. It's happening in the bathrooms. It's happening in the cars, in the parks, and even on the 50-yard line in front of everyone. What kind of school are you running there, bitch? You're campus security. You are campus security. And you're talking about how children are having sex in all of these places. You know they're having sex and you're not working to stop it. You think that it's okay? See, maybe they're having all of this sex because they're being taught about it instead of not being taught about it. You know, when people learn about things, they are more apt to do them unless, you know, because they know about them. If they don't know shit about it, it's not a thought in their mind. It's not even, it's just insanity to me. These people are fucking insane. But, um, he wrote, the father wrote a letter that said, I feel that it's not age appropriate for these kids. And it isn't. He said uh, that the textbook is offensive and essentially pornographic at certain points. I was shocked when I looked at the book for the first time, and I am willing to pursue legal action, and I have other parents willing to support me on this. Folks, I have been telling you for years now the, about the pedophile agenda in schools. Common Core, I will post my videos from the past and other people's videos discussing how Common Core integrates sexuality and sex throughout topics that it doesn't need to be there, like math. Does your child need to know anything about sex or have a sexual class when it comes to math? Absolutely not. What about, um, you know, history? No, not really. Sexuality doesn't really belong in schools. This is just another way for the pedophiles to prime your children to accept it as norm and it's not and i can tell you time and time and time again when i've done videos like this the pedophiles come out of the woodwork and defend your children having sex not only with other children but with adults as well we are seeing an abundance of adults having sex with children in schools more and more and more often. There was just a woman from uh, a TV show. I'm not sh I think it was a cheerleading show. A mother who just went to prison now for 10 years because she was having sex with a 13-year-old boy. We're starting to see this more and more and more and it's not 
normal and it's not okay and it does not belong in schools. Bondage? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Bondage. They want to teach your 14 year old, 13, 14, 15 year old, bondage. What? Vibrators? Really? Really? Now we're teaching children it's okay to have sex with inanimate objects? Excuse me? That's, you know, and there, I'm sure there's a lot of mothers out there who think having sex with their inanimate vibrator is a normal thing. Personally, I do not. I think it's a little strange, but it's become norm, the norm. So at what point, parents, are you going to put your foot down and say, no, 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 that's not normal. When they decide to allow the teacher to move in with your children and do whatever the fuck they want with them? I mean, at what point are you going to value your child's body and protect it and say, no, no, back the fuck off. My child needs to learn how to read, needs to learn how to write, needs to learn how to do math and important things, not how to tie up his or her, you know, girlfriend and boyfriend. I mean, seriously, what the fuck is going on? And you know, parents are very, very, very in the dark about Common Core. They haven't a, a clue. You know, a lot of parents have been focusing on Common Core math and how insane it is. And let me tell you, it's insane. But they don't know. They haven't gone as far as to research the other elements of Common Core, which includes the pedophile agenda. You know, a lot of people will talk about the gay agenda. There's a gay agenda. There, No. That's just a stepping stone to four, you know, two or four of the pedophile agenda. It's not a gay agenda. It's a pedophile agenda. And it's very real. Very, very real. And um, it's kind of funny because when I first uh, started discussing this, um, I was taught, you know, I was on one of the chats and um, they're like pedophile agenda. And I was like, go research it. It is very real. There is a, a reason why the men of NAMBLA are really ingrained with this new curriculum, that they really enjoy it. Well, because it's priming your children, you know, and there is no, there, there really is no reason for children to learn about sex. Fine. Teach them about their anatomy. I get it. I get that. That's science. You know, it's part of biology and all everything that I get that, but to go as far as to teach them about oral sex, how to put on condoms, anal sex, bondage, come on. Your children can't read. Is it really necessary for them to learn about oral and anal sex and bondage? No. But there are so many parents out there that are so focused on that, they aren't even realizing that their child can't even read a second grade level book. And they're sophomores in high school. Well, if we don't teach them, there's gonna be a lot of teenage pregnancies. Really? You're gonna, you're gonna start that shit? Get, come on, get off, get off of it. Get off. And, and here's an, another issue. Why do we have to integrate both sexes then? If you're so concerned about STDs and um, teen pregnancies and things like that, why aren't you having a girl's high school and a boy's high school? Oh, no, no, no. No, we couldn't do that. No, no. But we can teach them about bondage and anal sex. Give me a break. Come on, people. Enough is enough. And your tax dollars are paying for this. Seriously. I mean, it, that, it's absolutely vile and disgusting what these children are learning in school. You know, I, I mean, they're just kids. Why are we teaching them as if, you know, 
they're grown-ups. Like, why are we trying to act like they are mature enough mentally? They're not. They're not mature enough mentally, but we're focused on just driving this home in their brain that this is okay. And just, it feels good, so do it. Just do it. It's fine. It's good. Make sure you have a safe word. I mean, like, what the fuck? <sighs> Come on. I mean, parents, it is imper- You brought this child into this world. It is your job to protect them with every fiber of your being. If that means taking away their internet to protect them from this shit, you do it. If that means keeping them off social media because there's fucking pedophiles out there who are targeting them, you do it. If that means walking your ass into the school and raising hell because they are pushing this shit into your child's brain, you do it. I don't understand this passiveness parents have these days. They just roll over and take it. It, I don't want to make waves. I don't want my, you know, I don't want my child to, um, you know, get targeted by the school. Well, then pull them from the fucking school. Uh, it, it's just insane to me. I don't get it. I don't get it. When you look at these books and you see what's in them, how are you not disgusted? How are you not all ripping your children out of school immediately? I don't get it. And that's because most of you aren't even looking to see what's in your child's books. You don't even have a clue. You think that it's all just math and science and it's good to go. You don't have any idea of the assemblies these children are having where they're told to kiss somebody of the same sex. Kissing shouldn't even be belong in school with, you know, opposite sex, let alone same sex. Oh, well, they're just teaching them how to, you know, be tolerant of others. What? Like, where is your brain? Most schools now don't even allow school books to come home because they don't want parents to know what's in them. Well, then you need to march your little asses to the schools and demand to look at the books and see what's in there. How they're indoctrinating your children. But you know what's sad and pathetic is the fact that I'm even having to make this video. That I'm even having to tell parents that they should be doing this. It's insane the fuck is wrong with you anyways i'll leave the links below for you to check out thanks for watching all right that's about enough for now guys but remember the uh website is truth broadcast network and i did want to actually look for a moment massive upgrade to the network it's just beyond what people can really get their minds around, I think. Truth Broadcast Network now... Oh, look at that. Howard Nima's live on air right now. Yep, yeah, live. Viewership's low because I just rebuilt the entire network. But here's the thing. You click on that live tab, we have a new network feed now. And that's what you're seeing here is the network feed. And it can do something you can't do on any other website on the face of the earth. Something you can't do on any other truth network on the face of the earth. You can flip channels. You can change what's showing. You don't like that one? Change channels. Folks, this is unprecedented. It's never been done before. Been done before. Oh, that's the channel we're on before. right now. Oh, the channel we're on before. right now. Change channels again. Psychological operations. Change channels again. Change channels again. There's my show, but I'm not live. We'll go back to Howard Neiman because he's live. 
I have a lot more to add. A lot more channels I got to add. Here on TruthBroadcastNetwork.com. And Saturdays. Again, of course, it's actually uh, Saturday, 7 p.m. And next Saturday, there will weeknights, be. Weeknights. Um, and 3 p.m. Uh, repeats. Uh, and 10 a.m. Uh, repeats. As your soul leads. Um, seven days a week. Let me plug some Live shows there. Monday through Friday. Um, uh, we're going to have a show here in Torrington on the 24th. Well, he'll have his own November channel. At 10 we need to get the feed Standard on time. his website. And then Howard will have his uh, own channel 24 7. Click on full schedule and you can see all the channels that have been built thus far. And I just built this one on the run with D2NWO just before I uh, started this this broadcast here. This will be a new mobile channel that I'll be using. Click on it nothing will come up because I've never used it yet. And I've actually put in a little bit more information we can test out the call in with Skype. There's the number you would call in. And that's actually my cell phone number because this is on the run with D2NWO. So so I can literally be on the run in the woods and people can call me. Call in with Skype. Let's click it and see what happens. Uh-oh. <laughs> External protocol request. Google Chrome needs to launch an external application. Yeah, well, let's say launch application. That was some kind of security protocol. You're about to make a call. Let's zoom in here. You're about to make a call. You are about to you are about to make a call to kill NWO. Do you want to go ahead? Okay. Yes. And boom, there it goes. The person whom you're trying to reach is currently unavailable. Right, because I'm broadcasting right now. But obviously it does work. So you can see the new version of the network, the two, 2014 upgrade I've been talking about for a little while now. Well, it's here. It's functional. It works. And there's nothing else like it on the face of the earth. And I'll actually give you a glimpse of the internals here. So you can obviously click on full schedule and say, well, Howard Neem is on right now. Click on him. Boom. There he is live. But what's the internal part like? I imagine anyone, at least as far as I can. We're going to mute that up. Here's the internals. And I probably shouldn't show you this. But this is where I go to add a channel, add a show, and so on. There is no limit to the number of channels that I can add, the number of shows that I can add. And so I'm going to work with as much of the truth movement that will work with me to get them onto the network. If you don't see someone on Truth Broadcast Network, then get a hold of me and say, hey, I want this person on here, or I want this show on here, or this radio station, or this network. Or get a hold of them and say, hey, you need to get a hold of this guy and get on Truth Broadcast Network. But there are some people who will never be allowed on the Truth Broadcast Network. People who I know are deceiving you will never be allowed onto the network. People who I know are operatives or are working for the New World Order will never be allowed onto the network. That said, because it's going to be so big and all-encompassing, it will not be possible for me to monitor every person, every channel, all the time. It's literally not going to be possible. So what I intend to do is have warnings, cautions, and ratings somehow in this system. So you flip to somebody you ain't never seen before and I don't have time to watch, it'll actually say, you know, caution, broadcaster not known, content, you know, in question. I don't know. I'll work out something. So the, the website, truthbroadcastnetwork.com, Eventually, this is just going to be beyond belief. But for right now, it's just begun. Which is why there's a show on there called In the Beginning. And this is me actually creating the network. I'm going to film my creating the network. And that's what this is. So if you look here, what you're seeing is you're seeing me creating the network making the show in the beginning, putting it on the schedule, working on, on graphics for the banners and so on. 
And I'll be doing that more, but for right now, I am headed on the run because <laughs> I've got to make my first broadcast for On the Run with D2 NWO. There's nothing there now. I am out for now. Death to the New World Order. <laughs>